I will be showing you how to go from this to this. I will be comparing and benchmarking each major setting for graphics and performance differences so you can better optimize the game for your system. And I will be giving you my optimized settings as well. But first, I would like to thank Ubisoft for giving me access to this game. And don't forget that you can watch this video in full quality without compression on my Patreon. Let's start by taking a look at CPU performance. It looks like the game is so GPU demanding that we are barely being CPU bottlenecked. With the frame rates reaching around 50 to 60 FPS, and the CPU usage is over 80%. Only then does the GPU usage start to drop a bit from time to time. The game appears to properly utilize the CPU with perfect frame times and no stuttering issues in my many hours testing it. But the game is absurdly GPU heavy. You will be GPU limited nearly all the time since the frame rates are way lower than what the game's visuals offer. It looks to be this way because of various new tech the game is using, such as virtual geometry rendering, which is similar to Unreal Engine 5's Nanite, and the new foliage and tree wind simulation, among many others. But even so, it still falls to the low of diminishing returns. With this out of the way, Let's take a look at the settings and see just how much performance we can squeeze out of this absurdly demanding game. Starting with upscaling, native TAA has noticeable shimmering and aliasing even while static. XESS looks a bit softer, but it is much more stable. FSR looks to be less stable and suffers from lots of visual issues. DLSS looks the sharpest and most stable by far. Now let's take a look at some transparencies and particle effects. More specifically, at this fire. Native TAA looks stable while XESS looks a bit pixelated. FSR looks way too soft here. And DLSS looks very stable with no noticeable issues. Now let's take a look at the upscalers in motion. Going from native TAA to XESS looks mostly stable, with the slight ghosting not being noticeable unless you're looking for it. As for FSR, the ghosting is way more noticeable since it's harsher and lasts for more frames, definitely noticeable during normal gameplay. And DLSS looks very stable and doesn't suffer from any glaring issues, as usual. DLSS is my recommended option if your GPU supports it. Now let's take a look at the newest and most vital setting to the game's presentation, Ray Traced Global Illumination, which allows for dynamic lighting as seen in this footage. As for the setting itself, it can't be entirely disabled. The lowest setting only limits it to the hideout portion of the map, while disabling it in the rest of the open world. Otherwise, it can be enabled as a diffuse only or diffuse plus specular, and it has a major impact to the game's overall presentation. However, the additional specular option has a more subtle impact to the environment, depending on the scene and surfaces it is applied to. Outdoor scenes look noticeably flat without ray tracing, as if they were designed to be used with RT as a base. The improvements of the specular option can be especially seen on water surfaces, as reflections on them don't get cut off when their objects are out of frame anymore. As for performance, it obviously has a large impact, but as the game still uses ray tracing on the lowest option, even if it's in the hideout area only, it further inclines me to recommend enabling ray tracing, more specifically the diffuse everywhere option as the optimized setting for the best balance. Only disable it as a last resort if you need the extra performance. The ray tracing quality setting controls its accuracy. Medium and high have a noticeable improvement over low. 
but I can't see any immediate improvements over high from my testing. Make sure to keep this setting above low as it messes up the reflections on water surfaces. Performance wise, anything over low performs similarly, but I recommend high to be on the safe side. The BVH quality setting is supposed to control the quality and quantity of objects calculated in the ray traced world. But across many scenes, I wasn't able to find any difference in either performance or image quality. Keep this on high to be safe for now. The screen space effects setting is supposed to control screen space reflections and ambient occlusion but they have an almost non-existent impact to image quality as when ray tracing is fully turned on it doesn't seem to have any effect from what i have seen but when rt is turned off it does have a rather small impact and it doesn't seem to affect performance either so keep this setting on high the light source quality setting adjusts the quality of light sources as well as the overall appearance of lights in scenes. This setting also determines if certain objects can cast shadows or not, and it can have a large impact to performance depending on the scene. I recommend medium for the best balance. The shadow quality setting incrementally increases shadow quality and draw distance with each option, and it has a large impact to performance, other than medium, which is why medium is my recommended setting for the best balance. The texture streaming pool setting controls how much VRAM is allocated for textures and it appears that only the very high and ultra high options increase VRAM usage and only by a couple hundred megabytes each and I couldn't spot any difference in texture resolution across all options. The post effects setting on low disables lens flares and I honestly wasn't able to find any other differences nor was I bothered to so this is the only difference I could find. Also performance remains the same so keep it on high. The water quality setting incrementally increases water and underwater effects with each option but the improvements are very subtle and I had a hard time spotting any differences. However, what isn't so subtle is the performance impact when going above medium, which is why I recommend medium for the best balance. The particle quality setting is supposed to control the level of detail and fidelity of particle effects, but across many scenes, I wasn't able to spot any difference in either image quality or performance. Maybe it's broken or I wasn't looking at the right scene. Keep it on very high just to be safe. The loading distance setting controls the distance at which objects start to load in and their level of detail. Going above medium starts to reduce performance noticeably. So I recommend medium for the best balance. The drawing distance setting controls the draw distance, density of some foliage, and level of detail of certain objects in the environment. It has an incremental impact on both image quality and performance with each option. I recommend medium for the best balance. The micro polygon setting adjusts the memory allocated for virtual geometry rendering. I wasn't able to notice any immediate differences in image quality, but VRAM usage increases a bit with each option. 
the terrain quality setting controls terrain tessellation and its rendering distance with each option gradually increasing terrain quality and all options perform similarly except for the ultra high option which slightly lowers performance further which is why i recommend very high for the best balance The deformation setting increases deformation quality with each option and performance seems to be the same across all options. I recommend high as it looks the best at no measurable cost. The scatter density setting controls the amount of objects scattered throughout the world, mostly applicable on foliage and the very high and ultra high options further increase their rendering distance which is why performance on those options drops therefore i recommend high for the best balance the virtual texture setting increases the resolution of terrain textures and makes a noticeable improvement on both image quality and vram consumption it also drops fps by one with each option i recommend high as it looks the best the character quality setting adjusts character level of detail and budget including their shadow cutoff point this setting requires a restart after changing options which is why characters were reset in this footage its performance impact is negligible but i recommend to keep it on very high to be safe as some areas might further impact cpu performance the hair strands setting greatly increases hair quality on the main character as well as nearby npcs depending on the option used also with this setting dynamic hair physics are enabled meaning wind will now realistically blow the hair away in the correct direction it has a measurable impact on performance with each option which is why i recommend only enabling it on the player character for the best balance the cloud quality setting gradually increases clouds quality with each option low and medium perform around the same while high and above lower performance measurably i recommend medium for the best balance the fog quality increase with each option is very subtle and they all seem to perform the same therefore i recommend very high for the best quality at no performance impact and here are the optimized settings i would like to thank chirpy for being a platinum supporter on patreon for becoming a member and supporting me directly you get to download and watch my newest optimization guide videos in full quality without youtube compression and have your name in my optimization guide videos and also get to download my two performance overlays that you see in my videos now let's see the performance comparisons at max settings with dlaa at 1440p the poor rtx 3060 is getting hammered with no breathing room the frame rates are averaging around 16 fps with the vram consumption over 10 and a half gigs using the optimized settings at native dlaa surprisingly still doesn't get us over 30 fps the performance scalability is terrible in this game and it's only when dropping to dlss quality does the frame rate go over 30 fps now it stays between 30 and 40 fps to be exact and vram consumption dropped to just over 9 gigabytes while this game is technically more advanced than previous ac games its final image quality still doesn't justify how demanding it is ac shadows barely looks better than valhalla while running at half the frame rate we are now way past the point of diminishing returns with the games releasing nowadays what do you guys think